Hello, I'm Joan. I'm a Canadian family physician who also works as a restorative medical educator, facilitator, and coach. I create spaces that rehumanize the work of healthcare. I'm creating this podcast to remind myself, as well as anyone else working in a helping profession, that when you are working and caring for your human patients, you are the other human in the room. Hey there, healthcare humans. Before we dive into this week's episode, I wanted to let you know about a new way that you can get coaching support from me that's more flexible to a busy schedule and is also a lower financial investment for you. I'm calling it Coaching on the Go. So um, basically for a monthly fee, you get access to text as well as voice memo support from me through a voice app um, called Voxer. Um, I've already tried this out with a number of current clients and I'm really enjoying it. And so now I want to expand um, the offer to others that may be interested. So I think this might be um, a good option for you if you listen to this podcast and you wish that you could talk back to me. <laughs> if you hear things that I say and you go, oh my gosh, I want to apply that to my life, but I'm actually not sure how. Or maybe you hear something and you apply it to your life but you're not sure what to do next. Um, if you've wished that you could kind of like phone a friend, if you will, you wish you could have phoned me in the middle of a really sticky patient dilemma, a really awkward colleague dynamic, like even a personal life dynamic, if that's what you'd like to use the support for. Um, I'm here for all of it. And the way I'm able to be here for all of it is because it's asynchronous. So basically through this app, you either write to me or send me a voice memo like telling me what's going on. And then I usually say within 48 business hours, so sometime that day or the next day, unless it's over the weekend, um, I will listen and then I will typically not write back. I will usually speak back to you. So you get personalized advice, support, coaching from me. Um, the other reason I'm calling it coaching on the go is that the vast majority of the time I am listening and responding while driving or going for a walk or run or doing chores around the house. So get ready for some like delightful background noise and getting sort of off the cuff Joan. <laughs> but um, those that are in the program now are enjoying it. Um, and it is like a fraction of the cost of signing up for the full one-on-one -on -one coaching program that I know most, many people don't um, wish to have the time or the financial investment currently. And so this way, there's still a way that you can get connection and support from me in a way that works for you. So if you are interested in that option, um, you can check out the show notes for this podcast or go to joanchanmd.com slash coaching. And I'm going to have that as a new option. Look for coaching on the go. And it's all there. The more information, you can always reach out to me over email or Instagram if you have further questions before you want to sign up. If not, you can just go ahead and sign up and let's start talking. So I hope to connect with you soon there. Hello there, healthcare humans. Thank you so much for coming back for another episode of The Other Human in the Room. So today, I want to talk about the messy middle. The idea for this podcast actually came from a recent experience I had um, working on uh, a landscaping project with my husband, you know, because what else will inspire <laughs> except for landscaping projects with your significant other? Um, so uh, over the past four days, like over the weekend, and then I and I actually took two days off from work, and so did he. Um, my my husband and I built a retaining wall um, on one side of our property, a smallish one, but uh, not completely like a two foot high. I don't know about distance, like, you know, the length of the side of our house. Uh, we built that thing. We built it with um, the first two days being the weekend. Uh, Francis, my husband, doing the majority of the labor um, with me just doing the other part of the labor, which was distracting and caring for the kids and doing the rest of the activities. Um, and then the last two days, both of us sharing the load of doing the labor. Um, and it was really fascinating to notice how different this project felt to past projects. Um, my husband and I have a history of doing like home DIY home improvement projects. Francis very much being the one who is most excited about that. Like he loves like watching a YouTube video, 
um, you know, buying a book about it and then just like going for it and doing it. He has the idea in his mind and then he likes to execute it. It's very satisfying for him. It is now more satisfying for me. But in the past, I would still participate and help. But like in our old place, we put in a patio, we finished a basement. And one of the main sensations I felt in those past projects years ago before kids was like this anxiety, this resentment, this this antsy impatience, I would say, impatience being a very common sensation I would have of like, this is taking so long. Like, it's so funny now having kids. Like uh, actually last night, um, our older one, Felix, um, who's six, we are now inviting him to help make his lunch. And like the entire time last time, he's like, oh, this is so boring. Oh, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do chores? I hate this. And just like dragging his body. And, and it took so much longer because of that. I would say that he, he is embodying my internal reaction of how it used to feel like when I was doing these home rental projects. And then I would have this extra layer of like, stop whining, you should be enjoying this. And I'd like shame myself for having it. And then I'd also get really mad at Francis as if I didn't have free will to agree or disagree to help him with it. And it would be like, it would be such a mess. There would be moments where I would finally be like, oh, this is actually isn't so bad. But there'd be many <laughs> stormy times, whether it was that patio or that basement, where I'd be like, I hate this. This is terrible. And I would just be like resenting the whole thing. I'd be so impatient. Why isn't it over? This is so frustrating. This is going to take forever. You know, like that whole sensation. And I noticed that this time when I was, you know, the thing is when you're doing a project like this, the most of the time is just a slog. It's not like we are like dancing and having fun. Like the majority of what we did over the past several days was shovel dirt and or gravel and or stones like into a wheelbarrow to put it in a bin or to put it in the ground. And it's sort of this ironic thing like you dig all this dirt out of the ground and then you put different kinds of dirt into the ground and then you stack more dirt in the form of stones on top. <laughs> like it's just shifting matter around. <laughs> and um, there's a way it can just feel like, like one shovel at a time. I was noticing my brain invited to go back from that space of this is taking forever. What a slog. You look, you don't have the inspiration of what it's going to become because you look at the like deep hole that you've dug in the side of the house and all the mud and all the muck and how dirty your driveway is and how dirty your porch is now. And like, if I was in that old mindset of just like, this is all terrible. It's never going to come together. This is such a waste of time or like whatever the things I used to say, it, it would be a really bad time. And now I was noticing my brain a little bit doing like, oh, this is like taking forever. And then just shifting my mindset a little bit and saying, hmm, but you know, what's enjoyable? You know, I'm here to enjoy my difficulties as if, if you've you know, a few podcasts ago I talked about. So finding things that were enjoyable about working outside, how it felt good in my muscles um, to do that work, what felt challenging, what felt interesting. I also like played some Taylor Swift in my earbuds so I could also have like a good time while I'm doing it. Like I created a better time for myself during it. And then it was, it's just astonishing. Every time we do these projects, it's like slog, slog, slog. You're focused on your one little bit of the task. It all looks like a hot mess. And then suddenly you're looking, you're like, I'd be like, Francis, like, we just built a wall. Like, at first, it's just a row of bricks. And you're like, this looks dumb. And then suddenly, a few bricks stacked on top of each other. and You got yourself a wall. <laughs> you backfill it, you put some hostas on top. And suddenly, you're like, well, dang, we just did that. And there's something I find that is so interesting, whether it's something as like, you know, visual and physical as like, building a wall where there's this whole pre-prep building time where it all just looks like nothing. And that's what I'm describing as the messy middle. As I was shoveling all this dirt, it was coming to me like the sense of like, ah, incrementalism, the sense of like, this is the part that people usually give up, you know, whether it's a retaining wall project, maybe you feel like you got to finish it then because otherwise your house is a mess. But in terms of changes that we make in our life that maybe are a little less tangible, maybe have a little less like pressure to finish, this is where people give up because it, you can't see 
the benefits yet. You can't see the finished product product yet. In fact, it looks worse than when you started. You you feel like, uh oh, have I made a huge mistake? And there's lots of times when, um, in the past, I've been making a different kind of change in my life where I my inner critic and my you know protective self probably were like, are we sure we want to do this? Because it just feels so messy. And if you get through that messy middle and you recognize it for what it is and perhaps even find a way to have a good time and enjoy it, suddenly the thing comes together and you got yourself a new retaining wall that looks actually pretty good if I do say so myself <laughs> and feels so good because we did it ourselves. That's the thing. I've done enough of these projects to you know after the fact, like if someone had done it for us, I would have been cool and that's great. Like it's not like we're morally better because we did it ourselves or not. But the thing that's very satisfying about doing it yourself is like, it just feels more ours. Like it, I feel like I have ownership and pride in that part of my lawn in a different way than I have on others because like my hands help. I'm like, I can look at it at the window right now. And I'm like, my hands planted those hostas or something intangibly satisfying about that. And if we remember that, not only remember that that's what's coming if we get through the messy middle, but also find ways to have that good time in the middle of the messy middle, we can we can change the world. <laughs> not to put it like too stridently, but truly, if we all learn to tolerate, not just even tolerate, but accept, welcome, embrace, enjoy, you know, whichever place on the ladder you feel like you could get to tolerate is fine simply tolerating that messy middle is totally fine if we learn to do that and are willing to feel that messy middle truly small and big things can be absolutely transformed in your life so like i think back on just to give some concrete examples of other places where my ability to tolerate embrace welcome this messy middle has made big shifts for me so i think back to before I knew how to chart efficiently. And I've been on a journey of different ways of charting efficiently, right? Like at this point I use a scribe, but before that I was I was using this method that I learned from charting champions of like finishing my chart after each patient before going on to the next. And the process to get there was really messy because at first I was used to not barely charting anything and I was so disorganized and I was so distracted and I hadn't built up the muscle to really be disciplined about finishing each chart after each patient. And that was the first time in recent years where I really recognized, like, I have to embrace how difficult this is. I need to be really, really bad at this in order to get good at this. I have to have an embrace of that messy middle. And I had all these little mini strategies, like inspirational quotes that I'd put for myself, setting myself little challenges. And going through these different strategies really helped me get over that hump of the messy middle and recognize each chart that I do close a little bit sooner. My brain, my perfectionistic brain wants to be like, but you're still mostly charting a million hours at night. But the more I recognize that each little, that each little shift that I did make, each little shovel of dirt, if you will, that I did make towards my goal was all adding up and accumulating in a way that now, a few years later, it is such a deeply ingrained habit that when I, when I switched the AI scribe, in some ways I kind of missed it. I had to readjust, but I, I had that discipline to still close each chart after each one, but now with help. And that just feels like so delightful and amazing. So that's just one example. Um, another example is setting boundaries. And that one continues to be a messy middle and probably will be for my whole life because there's so many deep-seated uh, trauma-based survival reasons for me to want to give up my boundaries in so many settings that if I'm not paying attention, I can miss how many boundaries come to me so much more naturally. So maybe with a new patient or a patient in a new setting, I'm like, yikes, and I'm still like figuring out how to set the boundaries or what boundaries they want to set. And I'm not even noticing the set of patients that I used to just absolutely struggle with and feel flooded by and either would take a million more minutes than they were scheduled for or do a million more things for than I wanted to. But now we have come to a new understanding and dynamic where they're not even asking anymore because we've just so clearly set up the boundaries or when they ask, I don't even react anymore. I'm just like, I know you want that from me and it's a no, like whatever it is. I can miss that that messy middle happened and I've gotten to now to a place of habitual groundedness and boundaries with them. 
there was a messy middle where I was like saying yes half the time, but now I'm in a place where I know what my yeses and my no are for them, you know? And I had to get through that messy middle of doing it while my voice was shaking, doing it flushed, um, doing it even, and then sometimes not doing it and not beating myself up for it, right? Like that whole messy middle was the only way for me to get to those more stable, firmer, more solid places with those particular patients. That was a messy middle for sure. Even this whole project of like starting a coaching and education business and starting a podcast, like I didn't know any of the steps. I just started and I've been learning as I go along, right? And um, the whole thing in some ways is a messy middle. I'm not actually sure where this whole thing is going. In this case, because it's such a like deeply creative project for me, I still get times where I get anxious about it or listen to the wrong business people and get kind of like caught up in the need for success or something. But most of the time, it's really just like my sandbox to play around with in this messy middle of my gosh, what could this become? Like, what could it become? And what kind of impact could I have through these different mediums of teaching and coaching people? What is the impact I could have on healthcare? This is the messy middle. Let's see. And having that approach has allowed me to really not get tripped up by the like, what will people think of me? Or what's my defined goal? Or what are my money milestones or whatever? Like instead, it's just like a more deeply rich creative process. So those were some examples from my life I could think of where finding a way to embrace the messy middle has like really been allowed to, it bore good fruit in my life to do so, you know? And so now turning it over to you, thinking of you all who are listening or watching, you know, um, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while and you've heard me suggest different concepts about, you know, whether it's time efficiency stuff, boundary setting stuff, changing relationships with colleagues or patients, changing your relationship to yourself, and you're like wanting to apply some of those concepts of like, oh, you know, Joan did talk about adding more pleasure into my life, but I tried and I failed. I tried and I, it's too much. It's too hard. It's, I'm too overwhelmed, whatever it is. Right. And, or if you're in one of the courses that you can take with me, so you're in the time course where I like talk more specifically about like the ways that have helped me to feel in a deeper, more happy relationship with time, you know, or my rest course talking about how to learn how to rest, right? Both of those are really challenging topics because of all the socialization around them. So maybe you've watched a few modules and you're like, well, I can't apply this. I don't know what to do. I've already failed. I haven't even finished the course. And there's this perfectionistic mindset we can get into where because you've heard a new idea, maybe tried it a few times, it hasn't worked. That means it's the end. That means it's a failure. That means it's proof that this chapter is closed. That's the moment where I'm inviting you instead to think of yourself in the messy middle. So you've tried a few things. So you've tested out ways to be efficient that work for you, your brain, your environment, your historical context. And so far, you haven't found a groove. What if none of that's a problem? What if that simply means you're in this messy middle? And the messy middle is where change happens. The messy middle means that you are moving in a beautiful direction. Actually, if it feels messy, if it feels chaotic, if it feels out of control, actually, what if that means you're moving in a, in a lovely direction? What if the actually more sinister, dangerous way you could be feeling is very static, very stuck, very rigid, very need for things to be exactly as they are? Because the thing about that is life is full of change. And even if there was a system that was working for you, things are changing so fast that there's probably something about it that's about to be or already is a little bit messy. There's something about embracing the fact that that is inevitable and part of life and actively sort of inviting yourself in to the messy middles that are leading you towards what you actually want with your life. It gives you back a sense of agency and allows things also allows you to get to a level of like awareness and acceptance for how things are. It just feels a lot better, right? So basically this whole podcast, I want to be just like a bunch of encouragement for you, <laughs> wherever you are, whatever it is that you're working on specifically, whatever messy middle you can feel yourself in most actively, 
what happens if you don't make that a bad, your bad story? What happens if you don't make that a their bad or the world's bad story, but you simply embrace, my gosh, what a mess. I must be in the middle of the story. I'm clearly not at the end point yet. That's what I like about like messy is like, so messy acknowledges the reality, which is that we're not just on this cute little path that's all set out for us. And here we go along the trail. Like it's a mess. We have no idea where we're going. We don't have no idea what's happening. Um, there's lots of parts of it that are painful and sticky and awkward. And that's how it's supposed to feel. That's what it's supposed to be like. One of the teachers that I learned different coaching techniques from talks about like the river of misery is this idea of like, once you start actively working towards something, whether it's accepting yourself, whether it's speaking differently to your patients, whether it's changing your hours at work, like whatever it might be, you are not going to feel immediate relief. Typically, you're going to feel a whole lot of misery, a whole lot of mess. And that is how it's supposed to feel. One of my favorite mantras I repeat to myself often is, this is how it's supposed to feel, especially about this messy middle stuff, right? So that's what I like about saying messy. And then what I like about saying it's the middle is it just speaks to optimism that the way things are now and reassurance that the way things are now are not how they're always going to be. We're not saying, well, this is as good as it gets, I guess. We're saying, hey, we're still in the middle of this story. What can I do to contribute towards the ending I'm I'm hoping for the end, the ending I'm desiring, the the thing I feel is a need inside of me that I I I wish to exist in the world. How can I be directing myself towards that endpoint, but understanding I'm not actually there yet? I'm still in the the you know makeover montage in the middle of the movie or the sports montage, right? Like whether it's a makeover one and you're like turning from a duckling to a swan or a sports montage where you're training for the big match, like. That's where we all are is in, the, in that montage middle part of the story. And we just are unless you're already. So like say your goal was to graduate med school. Well, if you've graduated, there you go. But in the meantime, if you're in medical school and you're like, ah, oh, this feels so hard. Yes, you're in the middle, right? Like sometimes it's, it's clear because there's like a literal arc and a literal time-based endpoint with the retaining wall. It's like, well, at some point this wall will be built one way or the other. And so you can have a bit of faith that it's coming, even though it's hard to see and hard to visualize. And the, the fun thing, though, is you can have that even for sort of bigger projects. You're not sure what the endpoint will look at. You can still have this sense of faith and trust that you it is working towards an endpoint you can't see, but in the direction you want it to. I think of that Martin Luther King Jr. quote, like the arc of history bends towards justice. I'm slightly paraphrasing that, but that same thing of like, some of this is about faith and hope of the direction that we're moving in and acknowledging we're not there yet. We're in this messy middle, right? So, oh yes, the other analogy I wanted to offer that I like to offer, especially to like people that I'm coaching. So say, you know, they're really working on something, be getting efficient. They're working on being in a different dynamic with their colleagues, with their workplace, with their patients. And they've, and they've just had a few experiences that felt like a quote unquote backslide, or they feel like they actually are doing good things, but it feels so intense and it feels so hot and messy, right? One of the analogies I love to use is the analogy of the, the caterpillar to the butterfly, right? So we often think of like this little, you know, bumpy, lumpy little caterpillar. And we usually just sort of see the before and the after. So we have this like bumpy, lumpy little caterpillar. And then it just like, does like a, a pan over the other side of the screen is this beautiful butterfly. And it's like, look, before and after. But the thing they're not showing is what happens in the middle, which is like that the caterpillar goes inside a little chrysalis and turns into actual mush, actual goo. Again, the messy middle. When you are trying to transform yourself, transform society, transform the healthcare system, just transform your relationship with your schedule, like whichever level or scale you're thinking of this, there's a whole lot of mush and goo in the middle. So if we start to look around at that goo and think that means we're doing something wrong or that it's not working out or that we're failing, we've missed the point. The mush and the goo are part of it. I actually have a lovely uh, quote about this that also like has a little teaching point in it. Um, this quote is from Emergent Strategy, of course, because it's one of my sacred texts at this point. So here's the quote by Micah Hobbs Fraser. Um, the quote says, 
And then there is the butterfly, a most magical creature. The wings of the butterfly are already held inside the caterpillar. And as it breaks down its old self into goo, the wings emerge ready to go. That process is amazing and teaches me that as we change and transform, we also have everything we need already right inside of us. So my organizing and healing work becomes about building the cocoon that can hold the goo so that the wings can emerge. Just pause. What, what a fabulous quote. So much in there. So it, even expanding on the fact that, yes, it's a mess. Yes, it's goo. But just reminding us that that mess in the goo is still all the ingredients we already had with us. A lot of us, especially if you're like into self, self-help, self you know, pro- personal development work, there can be a lot of a sense of like, once I find the right book, the right podcast, the right teacher, then they will give me the answers. But really the thing I love about this quote and I find to be absolutely the most true is the answers already exist inside of you, your, your body and your sense of yourself inside your spirit. If you like thinking of yourself as a spirit, like you you already know what you need and you already you already know, certainly your body already knows the power that you have, the the capacity and the potential and the possibilities that you could create with your life. And you don't have to wait for someone outside of yourself to find that. No one has to give that to you. And it is wise if you're on a journey of trying to shift something in your life, change something in your life. It is helpful to think about whilst you are being the goo, you have everything you need inside, as well as it is helpful to have a protective support structure around you. You see those two teaching points are in the same quote. So we don't need anyone to like give us the magic ingredient to fix and solve our lives. But where it is helpful to have to set up for ourselves and honestly to have other peers or coaches or therapists or who have mentors to support you is creating that chrysalis around you so that we're not trying to fix ourselves and then getting run over in the process, right? That's why sometimes there's wisdom to really only working on one aspect of our lives at a time, one kind of change at a time, knowing it's going to take energy, knowing it's going to break us down into goo, knowing that we'll need support and resources and protection around that. It makes sense to not, you know, be working on your fear of public speaking at the same time you're working on time efficiency at the same time you're working on your relationship with your mother or whatever. (laughs) Like it's helpful to for each season have sort of one intention, intentional change that you're growing in your life. I think there's wisdom to that. And this quote and this idea of the butterfly has so much wisdom to speak about that. Choosing one messy middle at a time, if you will. Now, all of us, no matter whether we choose it or not, I also want to name are just in the midst of a messy middle. Like the thing I choose to believe about our society, and maybe people will just believe that it's all just going to hell in a handbasket and we're all doomed for sure. But I still like to believe that we are in that messy middle. That's why I like um, Vanessa Andriotti's hospicing modernity so much, Is um, which I, I'm pointing as if you can see what's over there. There's nothing over here, but I'm pointing back in time <laughs> to a podcast that I released a few weeks ago talking about hospicing modernity. So the thing I like about the concept of hospiting modernity is it allows us to really acknowledge that the mess includes that parts of the way we do modern society are absolutely just dying. There's no coming back from that. And it talks about composting those bits, taking those bits, learning from them as they become goo, and then helping that to create and birth whatever's coming next. So there's still this hopeful element. So when we acknowledge that, you know, then when we read the headlines that say this is going wrong or that's going wrong, when we hear about the atrocities of the world, it allows us to embrace them, not in a yay way, but in a yes, wow, we are fully, certainly still in this messy middle, but without losing hope that it's like, well, this means that we're doomed. And so I should just like bury my head in the sand. It actually allows us to see and 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 acknowledge the realities of how horrifying in some ways life on earth can is for many for all of us in some ways now and for some more than others it allows us to really acknowledge that more honestly because we know it is a mess 
and we know we are in the goo. And then we can hear those stories and say, okay, so what's the way through? What do I think could be emerging from this? How can I contribute to what do I want to emerge from this messy middle and how can I contribute towards it? It, it gives it a different energy because we know it's the middle. It's not done. It's not finished. Anyone who's like, this point in time is where we're really nailing it and we should always preserve this point in time and how things are. Or even this time before is how we should preserve it. It's like, yeah, no, we're moving. We can only move forward. We can look from the past to to learn from it. And we are very much still in the middle in the future something beautiful can emerge if we work towards it together, right? So just to say, on a bigger scale, thinking of like our society is in the messy middle helps me. And then the other way that you can think of being in a messy middle is that just truly all of us are in a messy middle from the moment we were born to the moment we die. So like just that all our entire lifespan can be a messy middle, which means that nothing is set in stone. Sometimes there's like a very linear, definitely built on modernity, kind of crappy narrative that's like, well, once you've hit a certain point, married with 2.5 kids, like very heteronormative, very monogamous normative, all those things, like then you're done and you're stuck and you're trapped and that's your life and that's the end. And some people find comfort in it. And I guess if you're still finding comfort with it, it's okay. But knowing like your life keeps happening and and mess and change and growth happens until you die, it leaves a lot more open for possibility that sometimes I think people kind of prematurely say, well, that's it. My life's set on this track. I have to stay in this job. I have to stay in this relationship. I have to, whatever. I have to think of myself this way. I have to have this personality. What if all of those actually are malleable and can be transformed into what to whatever you wish they could be, right? Until we pass, there's always time for more mess in the middle. And what if that's actually a wonderful thing? That's what I'm pitching. So as you hear me talk about this idea of a messy middle, what's coming up for you? What can you identify as being a messy middle in your life right now? How, how does that concept resonate for you? Is it in relationship to your work? Is it in your relationship to yourself? Is it relationship to colleagues or friends or loved ones? Is it relationship to politics or society? Like where can you really recognize, oh, when I start to think of myself as simply being in the messy middle versus stuck or trapped or doomed or failing, how does that shift my energy towards this struggle that I'm having in my life? How does that leave more space for things to be composted down into goo? How does that leave more space for things to emerge that are unknown? What's the next plot twist on this adventure that you're on? How does that shift your your way of looking at something to be more open and curious and welcoming of what's to come? You know, when I think of my life, I thought I would just share a few places my whole life definitely is a messy middle society in general. I view as a messy middle, but giving some specifics I find always helps um, for myself. And I think for you, as you listen. So here are a couple that I can identify. I'm really actively in a messy middle about Um, one is forms and notes and things to do with insurance companies (laughs) in general. I am very much still in the messy middle. I have some strategies that help ease my mind a little bit, but I'm just like, just grappling with the fact that I really would love if these were a different part of my job, less a part of my job, because I I really just um, on a fundamental level, just based on my own values, dislike how the, the need for forms distracts and impairs my ability to connect with my patients. Honestly, on a fundamental level, I'm like, is this what we want doctors to do? in society. Is this the role we want doctors to play, including myself? And so I'm grappling with that and talking and literally kind of investigating. Like I really looked into, apparently there was a time in my province a while, a while back, I haven't fully looked into it, but apparently there was a time where like all clinicians like did a a note strike where they like stopped filling out any form. 
um, as a way to say, hey, this is too much. And then some kind of reform happened. That's literally as much as I know about it. I want to like look into it more and see if it's even true and like what happened from it. Who knows? But I was just, that's very evocative to me to think of some kind of collective action where we say, we're going to set some boundaries around how much of our work is about being a bridge between people and funding for healthcare, <laughs> you know? And so um, I, that's one way that I'm working through this messy middle. When I have frustrations or it comes up and some of my strategies are no longer working as well as they did before, I, I hold compassion for myself. I, I notice when I, I tend to internalize and want to blame myself or if, say a strategy I've tried, like sending in a simplified note and being like, I know this is a complex form. This is as much as I'm actually going to do. And then it bounces back at me and they're like, no, you do need to check off every box and like breathing through that. <laughs> so that's me in the messy middle now. I'll let you know if I get to any interesting endpoints on that one, because I really am on a journey of like, is this something that I can help enact change, at least for myself personally, if not for like clinicians in my province, that would be really cool. So that's like an ongoing journey. Another place where I'm in the messy middle is medical education, which is sort of funny because I know this is a form of restorative medical education. Um, what I'm more speaking towards is the role I want to play in like formal medical education, like with universities. Like right now I'm doing teaching in one space and have enjoyed it for many years. And I'm about to start doing teaching in other spaces. Like I'm about to start having a resident with me and my colleagues full time and have someone really, you know, be the when you're an apprentice, who, what's the person that's, is that preceptor? Is that, I guess I'm going to be the preceptor to this apprentice family doctor who's training with me. And I'm, I'm acknowledging already there's going to be a messy middle of that because I have too many ideas and I'm very excited and I'm probably going to come in real hot with, for this poor resident being like, oh my gosh, you're a human. It's okay. <laughs> and I'm going to learn a lot about the practicalities of how it goes. Um, teaching uh, a resident up close and having someone with me more full time and how that will shift my relationship to my work, my relationship to my patients and knowing there's going to be a mess with all of that. My time efficiency strategies, some of them will help be out the window. My relationships with my patient, patients may shift, like who knows, right? So um, acknowledging that that's what I'm inviting into my life, but for a good reason, um, that feels better to me and helps alleviate some of the anxieties of like, ah, change, what am I doing? Right. And then the other messy middle is, um, my participation in like bigger system change space spaces. Like I've recently been invited to some conversations for, um, the, the place in the world where I live talking about like, how, how could we reform healthcare and sort of in a thought leadership way. And, um, it's it's been interesting to approach those spaces because um, I have sort of baggage and stories about the pace of change. I have now a whole kind of new framework and set of ideas of what I think could help change. And now I'm at tables with folks who are in positions of power and leadership who do have different ideas and theories about how change happens. And I've noticed myself getting frustrated or um, impatient or whatever, like messy human emotions, which makes sense and like leaving myself space for those, but also wanting to have curiosity about what could emerge um, through the cracks of um, a system that's like just not working well at all. What could happen in these spaces with these people who have more influence um, if I'm approaching it in a way where I'm treating it all as a messy middle versus a okay, we need to have the right strategic plan, et cetera, especially in a space where, I mean, that's maybe the overarching verbal conversation that's happening is like, okay, we have a plan. Like, what if I'm like, yes, good plan. And then underneath I'm like, it's all a messy middle. Let's see what actually happens. That really helps me. Um, and it, it's sort of something I need to remind myself of and like ground myself in because it's so easy to get kind of caught up in the like, but we're not going the right way. And this is the right way. And that's like, I really want to invite myself back from that energy. And so um, as a sort of closer to this podcast, um, I actually wanted to read you a spell that um, Adrienne Marie Brown has this book called Fables and Spells. It's part of her emergent strategy collection. And 
Another word you could use is poem, because <laughs> that's another thing that it is. But I love thinking of it as a spell, because it's um, just a way of reminding ourselves that the language that we speak to ourselves in our minds, that we speak out loud, that we ingest and read, enacts change in us because it sparks different emotions and thoughts and ideas. Um, and then isn't that kind of like a magical thing, you know? So um, I actually wrote out this particular spell before I went to this change, system change meeting that I was in. I'm being vague, so it's like confidential in some ways, but like I wrote this poem out and then at certain points throughout the conversation when I was there on the day, I would come back and just like read it and remind myself, messy middle, this is what's happening. This is a complex movement. And even if there are narratives here that are very linear and straightforward, I know that the way the system actually works is more than that. So I, I, I would like reread this poem to myself, the spell to myself, and I thought I'd read it to you as a way of, again, evoking why it's not like a just a mind trick to say i'm in the messy middle like it's actually reality what you think you're at your end point you think that life is neat <laughs> no it, it's just speaking the truth of what is happening all the time which is we are always in a messy middle we are not so linear and we are not neat and tidy we are not robots we are messy sticky spicy human beings constantly evolving and adapting and changing to everything that's around us. And, it, and what happens when we know that and then intentionally say, oh, well, if that's true, what kind of mess do I want to invite into my life? What kind of movement and what kind of um, endpoint am I working towards that I'm in the middle of? What kind of, you know, storyline and plot line do I, do I want to participate in? You know, that's what I think this idea of messy middle can really bring. All right, so I'm gonna read the spell now. So it's called a complex movement. Over and over again, it becomes known. The peace we seek is seeking us. The joy a full bud awaiting our attention. Justice in our hands longing to be practiced. The whole world learning from within. This thrilling moat in the universe, laboratory, labyrinth, internalized demands. You are the one you are waiting for. Externalize love, bind us together into a greater self, a complex movement, a generative abundance, an embodied evolution. Learn to be here. Critique is a seductress. Her door is always open. So what if you get some? We are going further past reform to wonder. This requires comprehension that cannot fit into words. Out beyond our children, beyond the end of time, there is a ceaseless cycle, a fractal of sublime, and we come to create it, to soil our hands and faces, loving, loving and loving ourselves and all our places. I'm just now realizing soil our hands and faces. I mean, full circle moment to the initial analogy that came to me as I was digging up dirt and moving gravel yesterday. I was very messy. It was very dirty and everything was so messy. What if we really know that is what we're here to do is to make a mess and to do it on purpose and embrace it and understand we're participating in this ceaseless cycle of sublime generative creation of what feels good to us, what, what appears and we experience as beautiful and nourishing. And we invite those things in instead of forgetting all of that and assuming we're robotic automatons that are here to serve a master that doesn't even see us as human, you know? So that is my episode on the messy middle. I'm so happy to be here in the messy middle with you. If you ever need a reminder, if you're like, this all seems hopeless, I can never do this. I, I'm the exception. <laughs> I'm the problem, it's me. Feel free to DM me or reach out and I'll just remind you how you are very much in the messy middle. And that you've probably already created more 
and enacted and embodied more than you're giving yourself credit for, for sure. And you get to decide what to do next. When you're in the middle of your story, the ending is not decided. Okay. So if you want to now go listen to Natasha Benningfield's um, Unwritten, that's what just popped into my head. The rest is still unwritten. You can have an idea of what you're working towards, but you don't really know. No one really knows. And so if you're in this messy middle, what's just a direction that feels fun to nudge yourself towards and to learn what happens next when you enact change and embrace the messy middle on purpose and say, well, if it's all a mess anyway, this is how I'm curious it will feel if my life goes in this direction. How would it feel to work a little less? How would it feel to say what you've really wanted to say to that patient? How would it feel to be your full self with your colleagues, even though, you know, critique may come your way? So what if you get some, you know? All right. I'm rooting for you. I'm cheering for you. Let's be in the messy middle together. I'll talk to you next time. I would love to take this work deeper with you. Visit joanchanmd.com today and discover my growing menu of options for restorative medical education to suit your learning needs. I offer one-on-one coaching, customized workshops, and self-study courses that allow you to connect not only with my work on a deeper level, but also with other healthcare humans just like you. So if you want to start humanizing your work and healthcare to a deeper level and do it in community with others, please visit joanchanmd.com and find those options and what fits you and your life today.